Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be adding lighting into our game. So I've been messing around with the code from last week's tutorial and trying out a few different models and here you can see that I'm rendering the Stanford Dragon model which you can download for free from many sites, I'll put a link in the description for it, but as you can see it doesn't look very good. I'm just using a completely white texture here, so all you can see is basically a silhouette of the dragon, because the texture is all one colour, and we haven't yet implemented lighting. So that's what we're going to do today, and the first thing we're going to do is to add a class to represent a light in the entities package. So this class is going to be pretty simple, all it needs really is a position, so a vector 3f, a 3d coordinate for the position, and also a vector 3f for the color which is also going to be like the light intensity then we're just going to go to source and generate constructor using fields select all and click ok so we've got a constructor there and then we're also just going to set up some quick getter and setter methods so select all again and click ok and that's all we need in the light class the lighting calculations are all going to be carried out in the shader programs, so we need to have access to the position and colour of the light in our shader. So in the vertex shader we're going to set up a VEC3 called light position, which is going to obviously hold the position of the light. And then in the fragment shader we are going to need uh, another VEC3, and this is going to be the light colour. So now we need to do the usual things with the uniform variables. So in the static shader class we need two more ints which are going to hold the location of the light position uniform variable and the light color uniform variable just as we did for all the matrices. And as usual we have to get the location of the uniforms in the get all uniform locations method. So we do that once for the variable which was called light position which was in the vertex shader and we'll do the same again saving this in location light color we're going to save the location of the variable that was called light color and now we need a method to load up these light variables so we're going to create a method called load light it's going to take in a light and then we're going to make use of the load vector method in the shader program class to load up the light position to location light position and then we want to load up the light color to location light color and that will load up the values to the shaders. So now we have the light position and color in the shader but we also need something else to allow us to calculate how bright a given point on an object should be. If you have a look around you in your room or wherever you are, I'm sure that there'll be some light coming from somewhere, and some objects around you will presumably be being lit up by this light. And if you look at these objects, you will of course see that the sides of the object that are facing the light are more lit up than parts of the object that are facing away from the light. So the more that a surface faces the light, the brighter it appears. So in order to do our lighting calculation, we're going to need some indication of which direction parts of the model are facing. And this is where normal vectors come into play. A normal vector is a direction vector that points in the exact direction that a surface faces. Every point of a surface has a normal vector and it's always pointing directly out of the face, or in other words, it's perpendicular to the face. Basically, the normal of a surface tells us which direction it's facing in, and that is exactly what we need. And luckily for us, the OBJ files provide us with the normal vector at each vertex of our model, and we loaded all of these normals into a float array last week. So, if we want to be able to access these normals in the shaded code, we need to put them into the model's VAO, along with the vertex positions and the texture coordinates. If you remember from before, in our model's VAOs, we currently store vertex positions in attribute 0, and texture coordinates in attribute 1. So, we might as well go ahead and store the normals in attribute 2. So let's now go and do that in the code, so go to the loader class and in the load to VAO method where we load the data up to the VAO we now want to load up the float array of normals as well. So let's take in another float array called normals and now we can make use of the store data in attribute list method. We want to store the data in attribute 2. Each normal is a 3D vector so 3 floats 
and then we just put in the float array of normals and that will store it into attribute 2 of the VAO. Now in the OBJ loader class we want to call that method and put the normals in there and I think they're called uh, normals array so put in the normals array so that they get loaded up into the VAO. But of course we need to access these normals in the vertex shader and to do that we have to bind the attribute of the VAO to a certain variable in the vertex shader. So let's bind attribute list 2 which was the normals to a variable called normal in the vertex shader. And of course we have to actually go into the vertex shader and create that, uh, that normal variable which is an in variable because it comes from the VAO data. It's a vec3 of course because normals are 3D vectors and it's called normal. One last thing that we have to remember to do in the renderer class just before we render stuff in the render method we need to enable that attribute in the VAO. So gl enable vertex attribute array 2 and then after we've finished rendering we need to disable it again so gl disable vertex attrib array 2 so in the shader we now have the normal at each vertex and the position of the light source so we are now able to calculate how bright each point on the object should be to do this for a given point on the object we're first going to find the vector from that point on the object to the light source if you're not comfortable with using vectors then i would suggest that you read up a bit on vector maths just to get a basic understanding of what they are and how they work and I've put some useful links in the description of this video to help you with that. So now every point on the object surface will have two vectors, one vector pointing towards the light source and one normal vector showing the direction in which the surface is facing. So for example this point here would have a normal vector like this and the vector pointing to the light source would be like this. For this point here you would have the normal vector and this vector pointing to the light source and for this point you'd have these vectors and so on. And from this you can see that the more a surface is facing towards the light the closer these two vectors are together and so we can determine how bright a certain point on the object should be depending on how much the two vectors at that point are pointing in the same direction. For example, at this point it would be very bright because the two vectors are pointing in almost identical directions, but at points over here they would be less bright because the two vectors are pointing in very different directions. So now if only there was a way to measure how close two vectors are to pointing in the same direction. Well, as luck would have it, there is. It's called the dot product or the scalar product of two vectors. Hopefully you're already familiar with this concept, but if you're not then it might be helpful to read up a little bit about it first. But what's important to know is that the dot product of two unit vectors that are pointing in the exact same direction is 1, and the dot product of two perpendicular vectors pointing in totally different directions is 0, and everything else is somewhere in between. So this gives us a perfect representation of how similar two vectors are and therefore a perfect representation of how bright a certain point on the object should be. So let's do these calculations now. So in the vertex shader let's first get rid of all this colour stuff because that is from tutorial like 2 or something. Um, and now let's set up the two output vectors of the vertex shader and that's going to be these two vectors that I've been talking about, the surface normal and the vector pointing towards the light source. Both vec3s and both out variables because we're sending them to the fragment shader where we will use them in the final calculation. So you might think that the surface normal should just be equal to the normal that we get in but let's not forget that sometimes we're going to rotate our model when we have the the transformation matrix it's going to rotate our entity so the normal also has to be rotated as well because the normal is going to change its direction if the entity is rotated. So we have to do transformation matrix multiplied by the normal and we have to make the normal into a 4D vector so that it can be multiplied by the 4x4 four four matrix which is the transformation matrix. And that's going to return a 4D vector so we now have to swizzle it, I believe it's called, and get the XYZ component of that resulting 4D vector and we'll save the X, Y and Z into surface normal. So with the two light vector we need to get the difference between the light position and the position of the vertex on the model. So you might think that that would be just light position minus position 
which position is the position of the current vertex. But of course the position will change if we have used a transformation on the position. So we first have to multiply the position by the transformation matrix. And we don't want to do this twice, so let's do it at the top here once to get the world position of the vertex. So after it's been transformed, rotated and translated to wherever it is in the world, and then we can finally get the light position minus the world position of the vertex. And the world position is a 4D vector and we just need it to be 3D. So just get the X, Y and Z components of it. Then in the fragment shader, let's get rid of that color thing. And we're going to take in those two normals that we outputted from the vertex shader. The two vec3s, the 3D vectors, the surface normal and the two light vector. Make sure you spell them the same, otherwise it won't work. And now we're going to do the final calculation, which is that dot product. But first we have to normalize these two vectors to make sure that the size of the vectors is 1, so that the size of the vectors doesn't affect the result of the dot product. So use the normalize uh, function here to normalize first the surface normal and the light vector normal. If you don't know what normalize is really doing then it would be a good idea to read up about normalizing vectors but it just makes the size of the vector equal to 1. The direction of the vector stays exactly the same so that only the direction matters and the size of the vector is irrelevant. Now we're going to do that dot product calculation and there's a function to do that in GLSL just dot and we put in the two normals that we want to dot together and we get the result which is a float which will be representative of how bright this pixel should be. We now need to make sure that this result lies only between 0 and 1 because sometimes the dot product will return values of less than 0 and we don't really care about them we're just going to want to make them 0 so we use this max function which takes either uh, n.1 or 0 depending on which one's higher so if n.1 is less than 0 the float brightness will be set to 0 but if n.1 is higher than 0 then it will be just set to n.1 we're then going to multiply this brightness factor by the light color to get the final lighting color by the, the final light value of this pixel and we're going to multiply that the light by the texture color and we have to make it into a 4D vector first because texture is a 4D vector. So now final thing we have to do in the main game loop we have to create a light. We need a light source to light up our model. First we have to put in the position of the light source and that is going to be, I'm going to put it at minus 20 because I put my model at minus 25 and I know that this is going to look awesome. And we have to set the color and I'm just going to set the color to white so that's 111 in the RGB values there and the last thing we have to do is load up the light to the shader every frame you could do it just once at the beginning but we'll do it every frame and then you could change the position or the color and it would be updated in the shaders so let's run that and there you go look at that the light is working perfectly it's all looking pretty good and yeah uh, a pretty nice outcome so that is it for this week next week we'll be adding specular lighting to make objects look all shiny so that will be lovely don't forget to follow me on twitter and facebook and it would really help me out if you could maybe like this video if you found it useful also a link to yesterday's devlog video is on the screen now and this week I was demonstrating the entity editor tool that I made for my game. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely week and I will see you all next time.